because honestly, at the end of the day, it's that person's choice to do what pleases them. At the end of the Kill their day, child. You recognize that's what it is because you've experienced grief because of it. Your circumstances were very tragic the way you described them. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us. Bye, Leonardo. I'm a mother of child and I had to have an abortion because it saved my life. I had to choose my child or my son that I had. So, and like a lot of like, yes, I was against abortions all my life until I had to have one to think of, I have a three-year-old who's special need, he's autistic, and I was high risk and everything, and it had uh, difficulties that like, it would have died in a couple months, and instead of giving it that agony in my, I had a 90% risk of dying on the bed, I had to choose and sit for my son that I had, but yet, that's still like, bad on like, I don't like abortions. I don't advise it because of everything you go through, and you do regret it your whole life. Okay. But my thing is like, what about like the moms who get raped, or are really poor and drug addicts, and those poor children have to grow up with all of that, and like the born in poverty and everything else? Do you think that we should be able to decide the risk aversion of those children? Like, should we be able to say, you probably won't have a high quality of life, so therefore you shouldn't even be given a chance? Like, yes, if you lay in your bed, you make it, and all, but my thing is, like, there's so many poor children in foster care that no one wants to adopt, but yet they're complaining about, like, all these kids being born in poverty and everything, but yet they're complaining about this, like, only because I experienced it for firsthand. Yeah. And yet, you, as a mom, I had to do that for my son that I have. In their last moments, It was going to be a stillborn or only be able to be a couple days. I didn't want my child to go through that agony. Of coming from another mom who I've had three miscarriages and had to deliver. Yeah, I had two before. I yeah. had my miracle baby that I have now. With He's autistic, but he's my miracle baby. And then I had to do this because they told me I would have 99% chance I would die on the opportunity and leave my child that I have. Kind of going back, like if we were to be able to have more research to back up that there's help for more moms, yeah, like, if was, like better health care and everything, and like I, I didn't have to worry about the fact that I was gonna die, yeah, I went through it. Absolutely. And like it was better health care and everything, yeah, I wanted went through with it, and I would risk anything as like other moms as we can like unite together and ask for our doctors to see more education that's more in line with our thoughts, because. I know for myself, and, like, I... Sadly, America, the more money you have, the better you have. Like, I have your average full-time job, my husband does, but we don't make grades to get insurance, we get through welfare. So, welfare insurance, honestly, the doctors don't care. They'll let you die on the operating table. Sadly, it's all about money. It's not about the children, not about the mom trying to save them. And that's why I had to make that choice. It's like... So, if I had better health care, no. At the end of the day, it's like we're not just fighting for the rights of babies, but for families in general. It seems like, I know myself even, I had to fight my own hospital just for basic rights um, to bury our baby. We asked our local hospital um, if we could have the remains because we were in an emergency situation and I was told I was going to die if I didn't have an emergency surgery um, for a miscarriage. And they wouldn't even let me have the remains of our baby. This woman decided for herself. We're put in a lot of positions that prior to motherhood, it's like things you would have never thought about. Like I could die tomorrow. My baby could die. I I possibly could be affecting my entire life. I have a condition that I don't get oxygen to my brain, so I almost died giving birth to my son that I have, and they said. Yeah, I would fly out basically have a 90% so that 50 60. It's so crazy, especially being that in today's day and age, like my mom had four C sections, they can now revive a baby at close to 23 weeks, which a lot of places won't even do because they're just, I feel like the heart isn't they don't there. Care. They don't care. It's about money, sadly. And I, I feel like there's got to be so much more. Like, we're in 2019, we should be able to help people. And like, All the people. Yeah. Like,
I really, I call myself a baby killer. Honestly, to myself, my, I kill my. To me, I kill my own child. I, know, I, know, I, know, I, kill my I wanna hug you. Can I hug you? This is touching. Like, yeah, like you make your own decision. You gotta live with the regret that you made. Like I do every day. But. Can I ask you to clarify on that? Because you've obviously been very affected by your experience with abortion. So you are still pro-choice. Do you think that because you've been so affected by your experience with it, that might signify to some degree that you recognize the significance of what that act actually entails? Yes, I do. Like, because I personally had to go through it, like, I say pro-choice because you make your own decision because it was my decision to either try and do this and I end up dying. You said your health was at risk. Yes. So because of your circumstance, which I think makes up like less than 2% of all abortion cases, why would you still then advocate for abortion for the other 98% where the mother's health isn't at risk? Because honestly, at the end of the day, it's that person's choice to do what pleases them. Like at the end of the Kill their day, child. You recognize that's what it is because you've experienced grief because of it. Your circumstances were very tragic the way you described them. Alright, if they can't, if, like, say it's a drug addict who doesn't care who's going to beat her child. And, like, how the other day, like, these two people filled their baby with cocaine and beat them and it died. Like, if they, they have it or and they're going to torture it and all. Or, like, you know what? Screw Do we know that that's the majority of abortion cases? Do we know that the majority of cases where an abortion is warranted is because the child is going to be brought up in a home where they're being tortured? I'm sorry, like, when I went in there that day, there was a couple moms doing it. And most of them is because, like, one, because she got raped. One is because, like, yeah, there was a couple moms in there who couldn't afford it and all of them. Like, I'm too young, I got my life just going for me. It's like, I had my first child at 18. I still have, like... I was happy that I was pregnant. I was happy, and then like, then I had to have abortion at 21 because I had that child and his health risk, and I had to stay alive for him. Yeah, some moms, like, yeah, it's a little selfish to do sometimes. Like, if you don't, like, my situation is a little different because I already have a family, and I had to put my child first before me, before sadly my unborn child. I had and your health, you said your health was at risk. So that's, that's what I'm failing to understand, is how, with your circumstance, when your health was at risk, where you really didn't have a choice because, as you said, it was either your life or the life of the child, where then you would then use that to say, I'm pro-choice in all circumstances, so that the mother has the choice to kill the child because it's convenient to her, whereas in your own personal experience, it was because your life was quite literally at risk. Yeah, like, me, but you know what, at the end of the day, whoever that person decides is their choice. That's what they gotta live with, no one else. If they... Sadly, if someone decides to, like, what about people who decide to randomly murder people already? Are you like, pro-murder then? Like, if I just murdered somebody and I just have to live with that? No, but it's the, that person who does that uh, person's choice. My choice to murder somebody? Yeah. Alright. You with your decisions. So you think that should be, uh, like, legalized and then I will just have to live with that on my conscience? And then, well, we have the army that kills random all the time like yeah they're protecting but sadly like nowadays and like my my brother well my cousin not brother my cousin who's like my brother turned, came back from my rack and shoot his brains out because the guy sent his child like eight years old with a gun coming at him and he had to kill that child this world is so messed up nowadays it's not what it was uh -huh. It's so messed up, and like everyone's out for themselves. So it's like you know what? It's their decision at the end of the day. It's their life. It's the life of the child, though. Well, that's not gonna fall on me, though. End of the day, that's gonna fall on the person who decides to go and do it at the end of the day. Okay. Sadly, that's uh. nowadays. It's like, yeah, it shouldn't have to be that way, but sadly, it is. I feel like you're being complacent in it. Like you're just like, oh, you know, this is just the way things are. I mean, obviously, we have a very large grassroots organization that came together in a matter of days to combat the pro-choice movements and the treatments of uh, young children and babies under Planned Parenthood. So I don't think that it's just the way things are. 
I think that a, about half the country doesn't think it should be the way that things are. The, the Supreme Court um, unconstitutionally legislated from the bench in order to mandate this on the federal level in Roe v. Wade went against the original intentions of the Ninth Amendment written by James Madison, a Federalist, in order to mandate things in all 50 states. So I, I don't think that it's just the way things are. I think that we have made a series of mistakes as a society that have led to this, and I don't think that access to easy and inexpensive abortion is a good metric for our progress as a society. I don't think that a society that champions... I had to pay almost $2,000 to do it. My point was I don't think that it's a good... Um, metric for a society to say we are making progress because we can now kill our children. That's, that's where I disagree. We made it to the cheesesteaks.